The judge is delighted to be sticking it to her, as you can see. <laughs> if, this were, if this were a proper objection, one would never be able to identify, identify a photograph of themselves. The witness who is on the stand who can, who can identify what well, is in a photograph. I think you can identify a photograph of yourself as being, that's my face. <clears throat> But you, you've asked him whether this was a faithful and accurate depiction of uh, the way the whole thing looked at the time. He doesn't even know how it looked at the time, he says. This witness has testified that at the time that he was being pulled down from the statue, there were people pulling on his legs. He's testified as to the position of each of these people. Certainly there are things within this photograph that this, that this witness could not see at the time the picture was taken. But he certainly was there at the scene. He certainly is able to, to identify this as a photograph of what took place at the scene. And this is just illustrative of his testimony. She's getting hysterical about this right now. <laughs> She's right. It ought to come in. And she doesn't know why this is happening to her, although the problem was written, and not by me. It's from a PLI casebook, precisely to have this problem. You understand? She is now, she's, the whole thing is going away. Why? She's now talking about illustrative aid. That's wrong, right? You must not say illustrative aid. Why? It is the obverse of evidence. The illustrative aids do not come into evidence. True? They are there merely to illustrate testimony. They may be marked for identification, but they do not cross the placenta. Correct? <laughs> they do not go in. You don't want to use words like illustrative aid. True? You got to get it in. Let me ask you a few questions. Mr. Sure. Witness, do you have an independent <coughs> recollection of which officers were holding each of your legs? By which do you mean names or, or something like that? No, the exact positions of each of them as they held your legs. Do you remember in your mind, do you have a photograph in your mind of exactly how each one of them stood? I have a, I have a, I have a vague photograph, Your Honor. I don't have an exact pictorial image. So you're in no position <coughs> on the basis of a memory, a picture in your mind, to say that's exactly the scene, are you? Well, to the extent anyone is, Your Honor, I would imagine I'm not. But to the extent someone can, I imagine I am. So maybe you can. <laughs> <laughs> that's very illuminating. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Very clear, it's sharp focus. In or out? Does it go in or out? How many say in? How many say out? We're starting to pick up more outs. And you're mad to keep this out. It's crazy to keep this out, isn't it? Because we're doing the wrong rules. Why? Take a look for a moment at rule 9014. What does 9014 say? Illustration, says B, by way of illustration only and not by way of limitation, the following are examples of authentication or identification conforming with the requirements of this rule. Four says distinctive characters, characteristics and the like, appearance, content, substance, internal patterns, or other distinctive characteristics taken in conjunction with circumstances, all right? For an example, there have been cases where, let me give you an illustration. The police were allowed to introduce a garbage bag against the defendant. No one saw the defendant put the garbage outside. They found the garbage outside his house. But the garbage was outside his house. And the fact of the matter is, that the garbage had stuff with his name all over it. And when you take the circumstances together with where the stuff was found and what the stuff says, then under 104A, it comes in because it's more probable than not that it's his. Get it? You don't have to prove anything to a fairly well or beyond a reasonable doubt. The standard under 104A is by a bare preponderance. And you can use the contents of the disputed thing itself to decide whether the thing is authenticated. All right? So watch. May I just additionally say that the questions that have been raised with respect to this photograph and what may or may not be accurate in this photograph does not go to the admissibility of this photograph. The only thing that's necessary in order to admit this into evidence is that this witness be able to say that this is a scene 
that this is a fair and accurate representation of the scene that was there. If there are questions that are raised as to things that are in the photograph, that goes to the weight of the evidence, not to the admissibility. Your Honor, I believe my objection is uh, almost precisely uh, the, the, uh, the point that counsel makes. This witness has testified in detail of all the facts and points about this photograph that he couldn't see. And uh, I have no objection to this witness telling us what he did see, but it seems to me that uh, this photograph ought not be introduced into evidence to do some testifying uh, with respect to a wholly different vantage point as to what this uh, scene looked like. And uh, therefore, in view of the fact that the witness was not in a position to see these things, it seems to me it would be very unfair to introduce it. <clears throat> Do you want any further response? I believe I've said No, but perhaps you'd like to ask him whether he's ever been on that statue in the grasp of such officers at any other time in his life but that one. You've asked the question beautifully. Would you answer it? No. <laughs> no, I haven't. <laughs> on the basis of that beautifully asked question, <laughs> I will admit it. <laughs>